What is up, combo fans? Brian Cook here. Per having a great day. This uh, modern twiddle storm video that I uploaded is going absolutely bananas. I'm thrilled. And I'm in such a good mood, I decided that I would record some vintage Sedgemore Witch Paradoxical Outcome Combo. <laughs> I talked about this a little bit on the Eternal Glory podcast. Uh, you can check out that episode. Uh, it will be in the card above. Make sure to listen to that. Uh, I talked about how sweet it is with Sedgemore Witch with Bolas' Citadel uh, because you create a bunch of pests whenever you cast all your spells and then you can sacrifice those pests to Bolas' Citadel to gain life and drain your opponent. Keep on casting spells off Citadel. But primarily, Sedgemore Witch is the win condition. Uh, you're going to Citadel, PO, cast a bunch of spells, uh, tie them off, untap, attack, all that good stuff. So... Yeah, Sedgemore Witch is the new hotness. It is the Black Monastery Mentor. No reason to splash. Which means there's only blue and black in this deck. No white for Mentor. No red for Spray Dragon. Sedgemore Witch does it all. But one of the cool things about Sedgemore Witch is that uh, it works with Storm. So for every copy, it creates a 1-1 one -one for Fluster Storm. That's pretty sweet. Uh, it's so sweet, in fact, that I almost ran Mind's Desire tonight. Uh, because you would create a pest for every copy of Desire, which is just so bananas. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the format is running Flusterstorm right now, and I really don't want to get my Mind's Desire Flusterstormed. Um, so I am avoiding that, although I could run it, I suppose. I could cut this, like, Night's Whisper for it. Let's do it. Let's run a Mind's Desire. Let's do, like, why not? Let's change it up. We're going to run the Desire. Let's get crazy. Uh, because the Storm Count works with Sedgemore Witch. It's going to be sweet. Trust me. We'll cast that Desire at some point. Um, and also, like, you can use Desire to put Citadel into play. Like, it, it'll be fine. Or at least I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah. Other than that, this is pretty standard PO. Uh, it's just, like, we got to cut our uh, tertiary colors... And instead, we get to run a leaner deck with a better mana base. So you have three basic lands versus stack stacks, which is sort of a concern of mine. Uh, during the Hull Breacher era of PO, I was running a lot of Pyroblasts, I was running Fluster Storms, I was running Breachers, and then those shop stacks just crushed me. I'm a little worried about that when I'm running four main deck Fluster. Um, it's just in the back of my mind. So we do have three basics and a Hercules in the main deck to help beat shops. Uh, part of no red, though, means that you don't have Pyroblast to kill things like uh, Lavinia. So we are running two push and a Crocus in the board. And then with everyone running four Fluster, we need a way of combating that because we are a spell-based combo deck. So we're running Defense Grid. And in post-board games, we will, we will be looking to protect Defense Grid with our own copies of Fluster Storm. Um, yeah, I think that's what I have for the deck tech. And if you want to support this content, you can always go to theepicstorm.com slash shop. Pick up some sweet, sweet The Epic Storm merchandise there. You're always welcome to submit a donation deck. You go to the link on the screen, attach your deck list, pick a tier, sign it up, showcase your combo deck here on this very channel. And if you sign up for the Epic tier, you can actually join me in the video as well. So if you're interested in showcasing your deck, you want to talk about your deck, you want a platform to do that on, that's where you go theepicstorm.com slash donation decks. Also, make sure you open up that description. Follow all of our social media networks, channels, etc. Don't miss a video. Stay up to date on the latest stuff in the Combo Cabal. You can be a part of our community, uh, helping build better Storm decks. It'll be great, I promise. Make sure to check that out. All right, that's my spiel. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, show your support, help me get into that sweet, sweet YouTube algorithm. Uh, but yeah, I'm just happy to be playing PO today. I haven't played Vintage in like a month. I've just been so busy recording videos and whatnot. So uh, happy to be playing one of my favorite formats again. I truly love Vintage. I've just been really busy recently. And uh, the idea of Sedgemore Witch and Foster Storm just like uh, seems so good. Uh, I'm just really looking forward to playing this sweet, sweet deck today. Hopefully you enjoy it. I will see you in match number one. 20 minutes in queue and I finally have my first opponent. Take your time. They typically play a lot of land still. Um, 
it's worth noting we don't actually have a third black source to fetch for. So it's going to be tough to hard cast Citadel unless we hit Metalcraft. Uh, I'm feeling a little risky. I'm going to keep this. I feel like this is fine against the control deck. Land is not ideal. Ancestral Recall. Everyone's on their flusters. Um... Yeah, you get to Ancestral. I have a bunch of lands. So they're back up to five cards now. <sighs> Pretty punishing. Are they in Doomsday? They are. This person typically plays uh, like standstill decks. Not feeling too good about this. I'm just going to search up the sea, why not? Doomsday can't punish me for that. Not ideal draws, that's for sure. Maybe I should have mulligan though. Like, that just might be uh, punishment for keeping a loose hand in general. Weird that they're brainstorming here. I should be dead.
they don't even have to kill me here. They can just like put a bunch of counter spells into their pile with an oracle, draw three or four cards with Necro, and then oracle me on their next turn. One force, two force. All four forces they did not put in their pile, so I must be dead this turn. Yep. And that is how you lose. Okay. Um, so we don't need this Hercules. That said, I don't think our board has a whole lot. I get bored in the needle for Necro, but it's a little bit embarrassing. You don't really want a boarding grid in the combo mirror. I think I'm just going to do this. I don't know. Like, double fluster is pretty good against Doomsday. I just have to be able to untap. Is this even good enough? I don't think it is. So ponder. On our turn, we're probably casting Brainstorm, hoping to fix up our hand, drawn to a fetch land so we have Fluster up. Okay, that's not bad. All right, so I don't get to Puridine uh, anymore, which is kind of unfortunate. And we're going to untap, draw the PO. And I have a decision to make on whether or not I want to draw the Will. I sort of want to... The problem is I can't keep Fluster Storm back up unless I hit a Mana Rock off this Preordain. Actually, that's not true. I can't count. So it's pretty free to cast the Preordain. This is five. Cast this Inspiration. Um, 
I don't know if this is good enough. So I can cast P uh, Will, play a fetch, and then PO. I guess if they had anything, Will wouldn't resolve. All right, so we got game number two. We were going to PO for four right there, and then probably time lock again. Uh, so we stole game number two from Doomsday. Just trying to think if I want to change anything. Well, this is a Magic the Gathering hand. My opponent has taken a mulligan. I'm just going to cast Ponder. I want to keep the double blue cards up. If they want to foster this, this, they're more than welcome. Sure. I find that too many people fight over time lock when that's just like not a card that I should care about. Like here it's going to be a glorified explorer. It was a two mana cycle in that scenario. Get some info. That was a, like, I didn't even get to see their hand really that went by so quickly. Quick force, force, okay. Quick is interesting. I'd like to draw an ancestral. Let's go. I guess I should use this while I can. We have plenty of them. I 
They still don't have a third line for Quick yet. This allows me to cycle PO if I want to, but it's not necessarily the greatest play. I think they're creating a a stop on my draw step. The fourth fluster. Um, so this would actually be. Do I really want to PO here? I'm trying to figure out if like a cycle is worth losing a foster and I don't think it is. The ghost is doing that math in my head was all. Definitely not playing out their mana crypt the way that this game's going. I was hoping they were going to double force that, and they didn't. Come on, Dak, let's draw some action. One is up to six cards. There we go. Pitching Fluster. Do we get to do stuff? Let's see with the exile. Let's go for both oracles. We want to see both oracles in exile. 
so they got fluster. They didn't hit anything important, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. So this is a fluster for eight. I can actually pay eight uh, because I know that my opponent still has a force in hand. So I think that becomes the correct play. Woot woot. The needle, not really that good of a draw. I don't know if I'm going to play that out again. Um, but this peel for three seems pretty free. Actually, I should definitely Ancestral first. Because this peel could be larger if I had a bunch of mana rocks off this. Our opponents had enough, and without casting a single win condition, we have won round number one. I'm sorry we didn't get to cast our Sedgemore Witch. Maybe in round number two, but hopefully you enjoyed this uh, combo control near battle shenanigans. Uh, yeah, 1 0. Welcome to round number two. We are facing poker legend Brian Harris. Uh, we're on the play. Let's do it. Are you telling me I get to have a turn one tinker with double fluster storm backup? Hell yeah. Let's do it. I'm sorry, Brian, but I'm going to do you dirty. Think I give a fuck about a ley line of the void? It looks like Brian's not even playing blue. A whole control. Um, why not? Ah, uh, the desire. I'm going to put back these flusters. All right, we have still not cast such more witch. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so the Crocus is pretty good against the deck that's probably trying to make Merit Lodge. Uh, Needle seemed pretty good. We're going to board four Golos. Get rid of these four Flustas. Got to say it like you're from Boston. Flustas. Um, so we have to take out three more cards. Desire's probably not super good against the Shops deck. Uh, what else? This step can go. There might be snap. I think it's your old friend Snappy that's the card that needs to be sided out here. I'm going to keep hands with Tinker. Uh, it's something that I do, and I'm going to do it right now. No ley line. It is, in fact, shops. You have a lodestone.
A mox would be really nice here. We did not draw mox though. I don't know what I would name with Needle. Like, I could name Wasteland, I guess. Um, I can name Mirror, but, like, I don't know for sure that they're on that build. They're going to name Top. I'm just fine with this being in play for Academy. So now I, now I can name Wasteland. Ooh, Sphere's Brutal. Probably gonna get wasted. Come on, don't waste me, Brian. All right. So this academy will tap for two next turn. So if we draw an artifact, we can tinker. I think that's how the math works. Like a zero? Um, nope, the, because the sphere break, makes it a break even, that's not true at all. It's interesting. Um, so I can name What would be a good name here? Uh, Mirage Mirror, I guess. No we'll time walk. Oh, it costs four. That would make sense. I knew that. I just blanked. Like these two. Uh, so I think the right play here is the brainstorm. And I can't play that. Okay, so. We're going to go to four. And then we'll put Blight Steel into play. They have one card. My fear is playing around. Um. What is it called? Mind Break Trap. I guess I could have played Ruby first. It doesn't matter. Because it would have been a break even on mana. They know that we have time lock. Another sphere. Blight steel. We have still not cast Edgemore Witch. <laughs> Duo. The third match. We're on the play. Um, this seems fine. This desire, uh, isn't that great, though. Because we have to play, like, we don't have enough mana to cast desire. Uh, and we need to play these out. So I think my plan is to go Jet Soul Ring, Opal, cast Brainstorm, looking for a land time walk. And then we could upkeep uh, Tap Jot Vamp for maybe Academy. Depends on what our brainstorm shows, but Loose Outline.
Uh, maybe if that's the case, it's better to just time lock. It might be. Uh, so hypothetically, I would tap this and then, yeah, it's just better to time lock and save the brainstorm. So now we go get Academy. Uh, would it be better to get Lotus? Because with Lotus, any land I hit off Brainstorm, because with Academy, I lose my land drop, and we only have exactly six mana. So I feel like Lotus might actually just be better. Oh no. Oh no. I missed. Okay, uh, I think there's still a line here. I think there's still a line. I can Hercules myself. Why is it not showing? Come on, please resolve. So they're on the Grixis Xerox deck. I'm hoping that our opponent just like isn't a savant and like sees this desire coming. Are you kidding me? They're going to force a well opal? They like sniffed out the mind's desire <laughs> that no one plays. Oh. Sort of a bummer. And then they ripped Ancestral. Ah. Oh. I hope we rip Yogmoss well. Give me some sweet justice. We're so far behind. You're so, I can't believe they forced the old Mox Opal. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to just hold that. Out of all of the artifacts, I, like it just doesn't make sense to me why you wouldn't force Will Soul Ring or Jet and then you would wait for Opal.
Like, what if my last card was Tinker there? Um, they have three cards in hand. I can't imagine that anything I do is going to resolve. All right. Well, that was stinky. So we definitely want these grids. Uh, let's get rid of the mystical, the Hercules. I don't know if I want to board off the Desire. Like, I know that they have a bunch of flusters, but, like, Desire's supposed to be for blue decks. Maybe, like, an Opal? Sure, let's do this. Why not? I think the desire here is just a pitch card. All right, let's draw Tinker. Well, I guess we get to play Witch. But if I draw Lotus, I can actually do Sedgemore Witch into Desire, and it would only be for two. But I would get two pests. I steal my ruby. So I think that they have bolt. Um, that's like one of the few reasons that they would make this play. So they could just be Breach with Sedgemore Witch. But make the Abraid main deck make more sense. Because I thought that was a little bit odd. And obviously they have Brain Free, so it means that they probably have a Breach somewhere. But I thought game one that the main deck of Braid was a little suspicious. But Breach does tend to play like that sort of slot. Because it has to answer like main deck soul guy lanterns and stuff. And we're dead. So our opponent got to execute their combo. I'm not gonna make them click through it. We are now two and one. We are back with round number four. We've opened up a reasonable hand here. We have Force Pitch uh, P.O. We have Merchant Scroll for Ancestral. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this. Gak, by the looks of it. All right, well, Gak doesn't play Squeeze, so this is just um, Hollowbine, which is a nightmare of a matchup.
That was an interesting draw. So I can turn one PO now. That was a pretty fast resolve. Interesting. I think I'm just going to grab Tinker here. I think it's Hollow Vine. Hollow Vine usually has some sort of interaction, though. Revenge Vine, okay. I mean, it still looks like Hollow Vine. The back of my head, there's another deck this could be, but like, it's not very. And I guess it is. It's Survival. I was just about to say that it could be Survival. I'm gonna force all the Lavinia. All right, so we're going to take four here going to 14, and then we have the upkeep mana crypt trigger. So we know that our opponent has one squee in their hand. Float blue here. In case we need to fluster. I guess I'm going to sack the Crypt. Part of me wants to sack the Opal, but it's a little bit more conservative to sack Crypt. Because, like, assuming that we win this turn, you'd want to, like, bounce Crypt a bunch. Fetch. Well, that was kind of crappy. Um, give me something to fluster. Come on. I don't think survival has anything for me to fluster is the issue. Maybe they have like a time lock? I don't know. Uh Sejmore which the few times we've cast it has not been that good. Um three cards need to come out. I think that's the plan. And if you want to support this sweet, sweet vintage content, you can go to theepicsurum.com slash shop and get yourself a mini token pack. For $12, you get 54 mini tokens. 
20 Storm, 10 Black, 10 Red, 6 Blue, 3 of the rest. It's just great value. And then on the back, you get 54 Goblin Tokens. You get 6 of each. They're all splendid different Goblins of the Horde. And once again, they are mini. They're half the size of a standard Magic the Gathering card. You can get those at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right, game two, we're on the plague and survival. We have Tinker. That's pretty good. Looking for another artifact to turn on this opal. Like a mox would be just amazing. Collector. Oof, that's gross. Um... I think this is a top top. I think we bought him the land actually. Uh, because we have three mana for Tinker already, so we don't want the land. I was thinking Blossom Citadel, um, but I guess if we're getting, uh, oh no, I didn't board in Blightsteel. That was a mistake. I should have boarded in Blightsteel. I was even just thinking like, yeah, I can go get Blightsteel and I just realized that I didn't side it in. And uh, maybe an oversight on my part, sacking the oval, because now we don't have a black source. Looks like nothing matters, though, because we have this push on top for the oof. Oh, uh, how lucky. So I probably messed up a little bit there because I could. They would have one, one less creature in play. The land that I would like to reveal for turn. Um, free storm count. So we should tinker away the other opal. Let's get top. Uh, we'll name Bazaar, why not? I think Pio is probably the best card here. Our opponent's going to concede. 
All right, this should probably be in our deck. That was a mistake on my part. Um, what the board out? Maybe a witch. Admittedly, witch doesn't seem that great against the deck full of creatures. Sure. Our opponent going to six cards already. Survival. I mean, technically I haven't seen the card Survival yet, but this is the shell of the Survival deck. And I think I'm just going to scroll for Force of Will here. This way, like a Lavinia or a Collector Roof doesn't wreck my day. Force of Vigor 2. question is what do I pitch um, I feel like it's supposed to be a PO like, I could risk it and just hope to draw a land and then PO for three replay needle One mana short. And their survival. All right, so it looks like we're going to get to cast a PO. Okay, I see you, Doc. So they're going to respond here with survival. And with this on the stack, I'm going to PO because it's one less card they have in hand. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to. 
I was like, they could get a blue card and then pitch it to something, but like, I think I'd rather just draw a card with the needle. Okay, um, we can just Mystical for P.O. All right, so Blade Steel's in our hand. We're gonna to wanna to brainstorm that back. Or we can actually just cast it. And our opponent's gonna concede the game. So we have still not won with the Sedgemore Witch yet. That was actually match number four, so we're three and one. Maybe round number five will be that round for us. I certainly hope so. All right, the final round of the day. Our opponent has revealed Lures of the Dream Den. And uh, unfortunately, we can't actually cast many of our spells. We can play Top and Mana Vault. But that's it. Uh, I think I'm probably going to ship this. Um, this is actually pretty similar to our hand that we had in round number three. Where I could... Well, like, hypothetically, let's say I just... Let's say I bottom demonic. And I could just uh, play Jet, Upkeep, or End Step, actually. Uh, vamp for Academy or Lotus. I wonder if the right play could be to just, like, Bottom Force. All right, we're taking a risky line here. Ooh, this is not the line that I uh, expected. So maybe that changes our plan, and now we're like looking to demonic for lotus on one. I think that leaves us one mana short. Um, so I would play mana vault, play opal, demonic. Yeah, that, that leaves me a mana short. So I think I'm just going to pass here. And I'm going to get punished for bottoming the force. All right, so what is the best play here? Um, I think it's still getting Lotus. So, I can tap this for a black. I don't think it matters. Um, because, like, if I'm getting Academy with this Demonic, it's all, you know, gravy. Ooh! Okay, so it did matter. Because if I floated blue, I could get Mana Crypt, which is one more Storm. 
So that's an oversight on my part. Also, if I float a blue, I could probably just tinker instead of casting desire here. But I was so tunnel visioned on casting desire. Yeah, like I just played this kind of poorly. And now we have to rely on luck to win. What if I get will? Because then I can cast will with one mana floating. Replay Lotus, that would put me up to four. And then I could go down to two mana to cast Demonic again. Play my land for the turn. That's only five mana into Desire. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely kind of played this poorly. Because I could have cast Tinker there. I could have created another Storm Count if I did. Like, I just took the worst line because I thought it didn't matter. But nothing matters because Desire's just as good as Tinker. Always had it. Don't question it. And we hit top. <laughs> the best line. This is actually top off Citadel. No! <laughs> Why can't I cast Sedgemore Witch? P play poorly, get rewarded is what I learned from that game right there. We can get rid of these flusters. Um, I don't know if we want Needle. Doesn't hurt to keep in the Hercules as like a catch-all in case they have a Chalice. Yeah, I'm just going to submit this. Uh, wow, that, that game was a perfect example of like, no matter how poorly I played it, it just didn't matter. This is a turn one Sedgemore Witch with Force Backup. This is the game. I'm going to let that go. We don't need to get a draw card with the Merchant Scroll. Should probably get something I don't mind pitching to Forcible, honestly. Uh, screw it, I'm just going to get Ancestral. In case I draw a Fatal Push, it's better to get a card that's actually good. We have two pushes in the deck. It's possible. Can't believe I'm forcibling a Luminarch Aspirant Vintage. What are you doing to me, Phil? I know that you're behind this. This memery. Well, I can't cast it at all. If I had fetched for C on turn one, I could have. 
uh, which is, I guess, a mistake in hindsight, but, like, how are you supposed to know? Like, I was playing around Wasteland. It's kind of brutal. Do I want to pay for Mana Vault or Mana Crypt? Probably not. Tough place to be in right now. Uh, so we can swing, they can double block. So they can block with those two, which would have been another reason to keep Mana Crypt. Another spirit. So if I swing with Witch, they can block with Mom and the second spirit. It's just not worth it. Is the will any good? I think we're just going to stalemate for now. Well, that's annoying. I'll take it. So I was thinking that I could um, kill Thalia, and that's not true. If they, um, because I can't draw two cards, 
So it's, it's just not how the game plays out. All right, so push is our top card. That's interesting. So I have a very short window to kill this Thalia. So I know that push is the top card. So if I right now if I flop top and cast push, they can waste my C and then I can't Yogmoss will. But I don't know how I'm gonna win this game otherwise. So I think our best shot is right now me drawing an untapped black source. That doesn't do anything. Um... So they can play Lurus this turn and then next turn play Thalia. My window to win is pretty short here. Even if I draw the untapped black source, like what does Yogmas will actually do? I could replay two artifacts and that doesn't do much. I think I'm just dead. Yeah, we should just go to the next game. Quit wasting time. I'm just gonna resubmit. Let's get it. Let's see a turn one tinker. Come on. I would love to keep this hand. It just doesn't do anything, so I think we have to ship it.
Like, keeping Force of Will is great and all, but I don't want to draw the next two, so I'm just going to shuffle. Well, that hurts. I think I have to force that. <laughs> Killing me. So I know that I can tap Mana Vault to search. I'm just wondering, like, what's the advantage of doing it? I don't think there is one. That was a bad draw. Looking pretty grim for us at the moment. Tinker doesn't do it because of this Arbiter. Yogmoth's Will has no fuel. We don't have any um, food for a PO. Maybe I was supposed to just mulligan to five. Maybe that hand was too slow. That was a bad punish. All right, so I'm gonna concede. We're not winning that one. Unfortunately, we went three two, and we didn't really get to you know make use of Sedmore Sedgemore Witch in this video. Uh, we didn't get to abuse it. I'll be honest, I was a little underwhelmed by it. Let me know what you thought. Maybe one league isn't a big enough sample size. Maybe it's terrific. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me why. Let me know. Uh, I haven't been playing a lot of Vintage recently, so I could be way off base. Uh, hopefully you at least enjoyed this a little bit, even though 3-2 uh, is pretty underwhelming. Take care, have a great day, and uh, keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.